His only wanted to know about the Scottish gang wars but were too afraid to ask. Lyons Crime Family The Lyons and the Daniels are shifting the crime focus from Ireland's Kinahan Hutch feud to Scotland. Working closely with the Kinahan cartel is the Lyons Crime Family. Their most recent confirmed criminal activity was the 2010 murder of Kevin Gerbil Carroll. But this is just one rock from the mountain of criminal activity. From their inception in the 80s, the Lions have been involved in numerous criminal activities over the past four decades. The founder, William Benny Lyons, started running this faction from the Postle Park area in the city of Glasgow. The Lyons family lived there for almost a century, so this became their area of operations. At the start, they began with minor criminal activities. Benny and his brother, Eddie Lyons Sr., saw an increase in drugs and violence in Scotland in the 80s. Wanting to capitalize on the crime trend, they began selling drugs and started raking in huge profits. After 20 years of criminal activity, Benny died in 2006. However, his brother resumed operations. Right now, the Lions are headed by Stephen Lyons, who is believed to be living in Dubai. 40 years later, their criminal file excludes extortion, drug trafficking, and money laundering. Speaking of which, the Lions mob is laundering drug money for the Kinahan cartel using Scotland's economy, but the Kinahans are not their only partners. Teamed with different crime families from Scotland and beyond, the Lions have become one of the most popular British crime groups. They are famous for their quote-unquote brutal business tactics, the receiving faction of which was the Daniel Gang. Headed by Stephen Bonzo Daniel, this gang had been working with Mark Richardson, the kingpin of Edinburgh. The Daniel Gang is the most mysterious group of all on this list. They like to operate in darkness. Bonzo likes to work in the shadows. For example, earlier this year in January, a low-ranked criminal ratted on the Daniel Gang, and a few days later, two men with masks paid him a visit. They smashed his windows and poured accelerant fluid on his doorstep without lighting it on fire. This was a warning. Even though the criminal was under police protection because of his collaboration, the Daniels still managed to get his home. Even the hourly drive-bys couldn't stop them. Right now, there's a £5,000 bounty on his head. Kinahan Cartel Despite originating in Ireland, the Kinahan Cartel is recently being called the Irish-Scottish Mafia. That's all thanks to their vast network of crime members who are operating not only in the UK but across all of Europe. Christy Kinahan, the founder, is no longer active in the cartel. His eldest son, Daniel Kinahan, took over the day-to-day -day operations. Records claim that the Kinahan cartel is now worth $1 billion when you factor in assets and profit from illegal activities. This criminal empire is hidden under the veil of MTK Global, a promotions company for boxing and MMA events. Daniel Kinahan and Matthew Mac the Knife Macklin first founded Macklin's Gym Marbella, or MGM for short. Since then, the gym company has grown to an international management and event promotions company that has signed major boxing names, including smashing that like button, just like you should do if you haven't already. But no, in all seriousness, they've signed Tyson Fury, Rocky Fielding, Paddy Barnes, Terry Flanagan, and others. By sponsoring these major boxing events and promotions, they are able to easily launder the money they get from illegal activities. Another company Daniel Kinahan controls is Nero. Even though the company is supposed to be owned and operated by a man named John Morrissey, the real owner is the Kinahan cartel. A few years ago, the feds found out Morrissey is a vital member of the Kinahan cartel. The second company that's supposed to financially aid Daniel Kinahan's operations is Hupo Sports LLC based in Dubai. This company is controlled by Ian Thomas Dixon, but again, the real owner is the Kinahan cartel. The only company Daniel owns outright is Duckashu General Trading LLC. Some investigative reports claim that the Kinahans use their profits and later invest them in cryptocurrencies so no one can track the actual owner. The most recent crackdown on a crime boss Edin G. from Bosnia and Herzegovina revealed shocking evidence about the Kinahans. Edin G. was an associate of the Kinahans. After decoding the encrypted chats, it was confirmed that the Kinahans were behind a 350 million euro cocaine deal. Namely, Daniel, Christy Sr. and Christy Jr. were the main players, just as suspected all along. Right now, the DEA has a $5 million bounty on the heads of Chrissy Kinahan Sr. and Chrissy Kinahan Jr.
and with all this power, the list of Kinahan enemies is also growing. That's why the Kinahan Hutch feud is arguably the bloodiest in recent history, taking the lives of 18 crime bosses on both sides, as well as the lives of countless others. The Thompsons Arthur Thompson was the head of all Scottish organized crime for 30 years. He was the wealthiest and most feared loan shark in Scotland, and his life was like a movie. He was the man who started it all. Born in September 1931, Arthur Thompson turned Springburn into his war zone. First came the money lending deals where he would crucify those who couldn't repay, usually to a door or the floor, followed by bank heists and robberies, and even drug trading, although his son Arthur Jr. was most responsible for the drug trade. At the height of his power in the early 90s, Thompson was earning £100,000 per week from his activities. Throughout the years, Thompson survived three attempts on his life, but his son wasn't as lucky. He was shot three times and killed on August 18, 1991, right outside their family home. Just two years later, Arthur Thompson died from a heart attack at the Glasgow Royal Infirmary on March 13, 1993. Arthur Thompson was so popular that he even used Paul Ferris, a Scottish author, as his enforcer in the 80s. Delta Crime Syndicate The reason we chose the Delta Crime Syndicate is because of its most recent member, Walter Douglas. He is arguably the richest drug trafficker in Scotland, with an estimated net worth of 20 million British pounds. He was born in 1961 in Glasgow, Scotland. When he was a young man, Douglas worked as a milkman. Seeing that the honest wage he earned delivering milk was not enough to pay his living expenses, he picked up a side hustle, pickpocketing. After joining the Delta Crime Syndicate in the 80s, Walter Douglas smashed that subscribe button and rang the notification bell. But no, in all seriousness, Douglas rose rapidly through the ranks. In less than 10 years, he was earning millions of dollars by smuggling cannabis into the UK. Here's how he did it. He would illegally purchase cannabis from the Netherlands, Spain or Morocco. Then, together with his friend Brian Doran, he would use his plants business to smuggle all the drugs into the country. They used legal ways to import illegal substances into the UK. At one point, their operations got so big that they filled a giant freighter ship with cannabis. Unfortunately, as the Britannia Gazelle was about to leave port, Dutch customs officers boarded the ship. This was the beginning of the largest narcotics investigations in the Netherlands. The customs officers found 18 tons of cannabis inside, valued at over £60 million. This was such a major investigation that the Dutch IRT, the American DEA and the British Customs Service had to get involved. After the court found him guilty, they declared that Douglas and his two partners earned £100 million in three years from illegal operations. The sentence? Four years imprisonment and a fine of $250,000 in March 1994. After serving only six months, he was acquitted and has been free to continue his operations. No one really knows where Walter Douglas is at the moment. In 2003, some people reported seeing him working with the Russian Mafia. Then, in 2006, the authorities caught him trying to enter Ibiza with a fake passport. Today, Douglas is believed to reside in Thailand, where he uses a fake name to avoid being detected by the cops. Bye for now.